Good morning. I'm Yanni the Greek coming to you live straight from Las Vegas. It's Tuesday, October 29th. And uh, had to get an episode out of Bet What Ace. It's been a little while because football season just keeps us really busy. Got college football, NFL, MMA each week, Major League Baseball playoffs, NBA started, college basketball's around the corner, NHL is here, and all those smaller markets as well. And uh, more importantly, I'm really excited for what's ahead. Got a new plan for 2025. Actually, it's been in the making for a number of years, but finally have a big enough sample size to implement the lower volume premium plays. And uh, we'll talk about that a little more as we get to the end of the season. Just want to make sure I'm able to uh, help as many aspiring plus EV betters out there uh, actually get there. And I, I think narrowing down some of that card will help, will help. A lot of you guys, especially those that handicap their own stuff and want to use me for confirmation like I do with the groups that I work. I narrow down the sides and totals I like. I wait for their stuff to come in. When we line up, I know to unload. When we disagree, I know to take another dive into it. Maybe I miss something. Or if I have no opinion on it, depends. Sometimes I'll piggyback, sometimes I won't. Now, if it's from a group that's, continues to do damage year in, year out, then blindly, I have no problems piggybacking a lot of the markets that I do not handicap myself. Now, what did I want to do with this one? Can't go too, too long. Got to try to find a way to do this live so that I could get your comments, get your questions, uh, all that stuff in real time. I think that would be most beneficial. But what I want to zero in on today is the NFL board. A lot of early stuff came out. I'll share a little college football steam for you. And we got a big UFC card. I already released a 5% big move. Now 13 and 2 in 2024 when it comes to MA, number one in profit. I don't even know, over 100 whatever units. Got over a 13% ROI on like 300 bets. It's been a, a again, the numbers don't lie. They tell the story. So if you're going to be betting MMA, <clears throat> most notably UFC, you probably want to know what we're betting. Um, with that said, let me knock out some of this college football for you really quickly. There's a couple of steam moves that I've been able to confirm. Uh, 306 Texas State, that goes on later tonight. We laid minus three on the number, uh, even went up to minus 120 to get that three. Uh, that's long gone now. I think most of the value has been extracted, especially when you get through that key number of three, even in college football. Now for Saturday's action, we also have Wisconsin against Iowa. We're taking the four on Wisconsin right now. If you are watching, it is exactly 1048 Pacific. So that makes it 148 on the East Coast. I just got a bet from the bot. So if you're looking at your screen right now, pull up tennis, ATP Paris, ATP Paris. And uh, we got a live bet. Don't you just love this? We're going to be betting Alexi Popperin. At plus 280. Ooh, a nice plus 280. I like it. A nice plus 280. Against Medvedev. Daniil Medvedev. All right. So I got to get this in. See, I don't plan this. These things we do live. We trade live. That's what we do. Just action's coming in. What are we going to do? I got to fire. Got to fire. It's my job. My job's to get these guys down. This guy named wants three dimes at plus 280. I could do that. I can do that. Good people. Hopefully they hit it. You know, I take a percentage of that. You know how it works. You're not new to this. Now my computer's freezing a little bit. I'm not a fan of that. All right. No time to waste. No time to waste. Let's get back to work. Now here's uh, two more totals for college football. 320 San Diego State, Boise State under 57. And then 398, I believe the last game on the board, Ohio State, Penn State. They're going under 47 there. So under in San Diego State, under in Ohio State. And finally, Hawaii team total, game 393. Hawaii team total. We're going to go under 17 and a half, under 17 and a half in Hawaii team total. Now we're going to move over to some of the college football action. Excuse me, some of the MMA action. Look at some of these lines that move so far. Oh, let me get a little more on this. I can't believe this line hasn't moved yet. ATP Paris Masters. Can you believe it? Go on, pop her in. Yeah. Alexi, come on, Alexi. All right. Now let's look at some of these MMA 
numbers that have already moved. And like I said, I think I already fired four premium plays, three, four percent, one, five percent. And we're wasting no time here. Now, real quickly in the main event, Brandon Moreno, only around a minus 160 favorite. Um, that line has not moved at all. Pretty much floating right where it opened. Bet online opened that up around 157, sitting around 160 right now. The totals about minus 200 to go over four and a half. You know how I feel about those three and a half, four and a halfs. You got to have real strong conviction if you're going to go under. Long term, blindly betting over three and a half, over four and a half, you are double digit plus ROI. So if you're going to go under those numbers, you got to have a lot of conviction. In the co main event, uh, kind of like Aaron Blanchfield here, but I can, can tell you with certainty there did come some sharp money in on the Rose Nama Yunus side. That was actually this morning that you saw some Rose Nama Yunus action. Now, Derek Lewis as a dog, you know he's going to get love there because he's always live. He's got the eraser. You'll be losing the whole fight until eight seconds left. He drops a big bomb and ends up with the W. The problem is Dennis is just too tough. Um, I don't think... Lewis is going to be able to land that big shot against him. He's, I think he's just too sound defensively. That's why you saw this line bump up from 150 to 160 to 170, even though I do think the public's going to be on Lewis. Let's see what else. Anything else jump out? Oh, Mike Malott coming back, looking for a big W up there in Canada. Tough out, tough out against Trevin Giles. I don't think I could lay the minus 220 there. Oh, Alexander Romanoff returns too. Man, I wonder how hot he was. Now I think he's coming off one or two straight losses. He's a coin flip against Nascimento. I think Nascimento should be the favorite. I mean, he opened it about minus 130. I thought he should go up to about minus 150. Instead, it's been the other way. So we've got to dig into that and see why, why the Romanoff money's coming in. I do not agree with that. And I think in the first fight of the night, Jamie Lynn Horth, a two to one favorite against Petrovic. Dude, Jamie Lynn Horst should be a three to one favorite against Petrovic. Now, I know Petrovic's going to get some love from the public. I just don't think that's the right side. I just don't think that's the right side. All right. Now, let's get into a little bit of the uh, NFL. Let's get some NFL action, see what we can uh, go over really quickly share some moves with you just go through the board just go through the board you guys tell me whether you miss this or not all right let's start at the top let's go nfl nfl oh thursday night houston jets line sitting about two one and a half two where it opened went to a pick them went back up no real movement maybe the total 43 now in the 42 so We'll just move along from that game. Go to Tennessee and New England. Now, New England got the cover for us on Sunday. And uh, this one's sitting about three juiced. Went to three and a half at some places. Tennessee's only got one win team, but I don't think this line's high enough. I, I think New England got a little bit lucky last week, especially when you dig into that box score. Uh, gun the head. I'm looking at the Tennessee side personally. I'll be looking at Tennessee there. Um, Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Chargers and Cleveland. This line opened four and a half. The look ahead was four and a half. They opened it at three and a half. Immediate Cleveland money came in. Went to two and a half, down to two now. So that's a lot of love on the Cleveland Browns at home as home dogs. Went through a key number, in fact, and they bet up the total. From 39 and a half was the look ahead. Got to 40, 40 and a half, 41, 42, finally up to 42 and a half. So they took a number of limit bets to get there. Same thing happened. In that next game, New Orleans, Carolina. Let's get into that one real quickly. New Orleans look ahead was four and a half. Opened it at five. That gets hit. Gets up to six. Six and a half. Seven. You saw a little resistance there. No surprise. Little Carolina plus seven. But what happened? That six and a half. Boom. They hit New Orleans again at minus six and a half. That's why we're looking at seven right now. Same thing kind of happened with the total. Went to 46. 45 and a half. 45. 44 and a half. 44. At 44, you saw some resistance. Remember, under 46, over 44. You may get some of that. Went to 45 right away. Boom, more under money. That's why we're now looking at 43 and a half. So a lot of conviction on that New Orleans and under side. Now move over to Dallas and Atlanta. Immediate mon uh, money on the over there. Look ahead was 48 and a half. They opened it, I think, at 50. Wasn't high enough. That's why we're looking at 52 right now. A little recency bias off the Sunday night game for Dallas. Move on to Las Vegas and Cincinnati. 
Look ahead, it was 45. A lot of steam coming in on the over there. Went to 46, 46 and a half, 47. So we took a number of limit bets. Didn't just move it quickly from 45 and a half up to 47 like you see sometimes. Now move on to Minnesota at Indianapolis. Saw some Indianapolis love when this one came out. Now the look ahead was six and a half. Immediately they opened it at six. A little bit of an adjustment. Wise guys still took the dog there. That's why it dropped down to five. Then you saw some resistance. There's always going to be some two-way action in some of these NFL games. A half a point, a point will be all the difference they need, especially when it's around a key number. Now, this isn't around a key number unless it gets near that seven. Um, but these guys disagree. They really do disagree. Most times it's at different numbers where one will take lay minus three, they'll take plus four and a half. So they got different bets, but at different numbers. But there are those occasions where even at the same number, there's just a difference of an agreement, how they filter the data and how they read the information. That's the bottom line. Now, Chicago off a of bad beat. So you expected to get some Arizona love immediately once that opened. And that's what happened. Chicago opened about a one and a half point favorite. Immediately, they became the dog at plus one, plus one and a half. Now we're looking at a pick them. And here's why. Because you saw two-way steam on the money line. If you could get plus 102, 103, 104, 105, on team A, plus 102, 103, 104, 105 on team B, guess what? You're earning for free. You're earning for free. That's all you're doing. You're making ROI at zero risk. So if you had the power to manipulate the market and move it in that direction, why wouldn't you? If I could get a ticket on team A at plus 105, team B at plus 105, what, what does that mean? I get 10 dimes here, 10 dimes there. I'm making a nickel. I'm making a nickel off a $20,000 bet. What a beautiful thing, right? Of a 20,000, I make two and a half percent return on my investment. Two and a half return, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. Keep rolling that shit over, 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 over. That adds up quickly. That adds up quickly. Kind of like card counting. All right, let's move on to Seattle at the Rams. Now, we know the Rams are getting some of them, those, those skill uh, position players back. Just had, had to have anyone throw the ball too, but they got it done for us last Thursday night. Now, Seattle opens a three point favorite. With the news of the injuries, of course, you saw some Rams money come in. They, uh, the adjustment was to one and a half. That's where the opener was because the look ahead was at three, key number of three. But they brought out at one and a half. Didn't matter. They like the Rams at plus one and a half. They like the Rams at pick them. They like the Rams at, at uh, uh, minus one and one and a half. That's why you're seeing now the, the Seattle Seahawks that were three points favorites getting one, one and a half, depending where you shop. Now, Detroit and Green Bay. It's going to come down to love. That, that's what it's going to come down to and how many points he's worth because the look ahead was a pick em. Now they opened it at minus four and a half for Detroit, obviously expecting love not to play. That's why he got bet up to five. Most think he's worth about five, six points. There's a drop off, but we now have enough sample size on that drop off's ability that I think it's come a little bit closer. I don't think it, they, that the market still believes it's six point off. That's why you started seeing it reach to about five. Now, with word that love might play, you saw it drop a little bit down more. And that's why we're looking at three, three and a half, depending on where you shop. So just keep your eye on the injury report there or try to get out ahead of that, depending on who you like. And finally, Sunday night football, Philadelphia Eagles. The reason I'm bringing this game up is because we went through a key number. Look ahead with six and a half. They knew they had to open it at seven. See what the market's going to do. The market said seven. Doesn't matter. We're going to lay it. That's why I went to seven minus 120. Books held off there to see will they lay the extra juice to get seven? It's exactly what they did. That's why you're seeing most of the sharp shops now sitting at seven and a half. Even money. Got to lay 20 to get the seven and a half on the other side. That's the Jacksonville dog. So early on, that's what's going on. Um, in the NFL betting market, one of the moves that I agreed with I like the Colts. I thought that the Colts was a a, a decent position. And uh, I also laid Tennessee. I, I, I took a 3% play. I, I released to subscribers on the Tennessee Titans at minus three, minus 120. I think we're going to see three and a halves. I do. I think we'll see three and a halves. So if we could get in before that, I, I like the Tennessee side. Like I said, I think uh, New England's getting a little more credit than they deserve in that game, traveling on the road. So whether you follow or fade, again, you know me. I'm always hoping you cash them, don't trash them. Now, we've turned the profit eight of the last nine years, but I tell you when I win and I tell you when I lose because transparency, just there ain't enough of it in this industry. And unless every day there's new bettors joining the marketplace, and unless we, who are plus EV, prepare them for the journey, they're going to have the same hard ride we did. 
where we just mismanage our bankroll, even with an edge to where we can't profit. Because if you overbet your edge, it doesn't matter. You're not going to turn a profit no matter how sharp you are. So the best way to avoid that is to bet low in relation to your bankroll. I've explained it before. You determine your risk of ruin once you're profitable. You could determine what your risk of ruin, your, your, your risk of going to zero is. Perfect example. If you have 400 units behind you. So if you're betting $100 a unit, right? If you're betting $100 a unit, you need $40,000. You know, $40,000 bankroll would be betting 100 a unit. And even then, even then, you're at about a a 20% risk of ruin. You will double your bank eight out of 10 times. You will lose it two out of 10 times. Now, if you want to get to 1% risk of ruin, that means you will double your bank 99 out of 100 times. Here's what you need. You need 1,000 of those. You need 1,000. So if you're betting $100 a unit, let's say you're going 1x to 3x. You're betting 100 to 300. Guess what? You need $100,000 if you want a 1% risk of ruin. That's how the wise guys do it. That's how the betting syndicates do it. That's how they're in operation year in, year out. That's how they're able to overcome any short-term negative variance. It doesn't matter. They have the bankroll and the management, risk management skills to overcome it. They know they have the edge. Sometimes in the short term, it's going to get wild. It's going to get crazy because it's one long war with a bunch of battles. Now we go year to year because we got to be able to keep score. How else can our supporters, those following us or even fading us, determine whether we're plus EV or not? The only way to do that is to provide a long-term sample size, which is why I always try to be as transparent as possible and prepare those that support me to best be in a position to profit, knowing that even during our most profitable years, remember, we've won eight of the last nine years. Even during the most profitable years, where one of them, I think we 3 x or 4 x the starting bankroll, we had some horrific runs. And if you mismanaged your bankroll during that run, you weren't around the profit. You didn't survive for that edge to materialize. That's what happens to a lot of winning betters. Now, if you're losing better, you got to get the plus EV first. And the best way to do that, I think, is to overcome the misconceptions that are out there. There's just a lot of bad information. And the reason is obvious. We know factually that 99.5% of sports bettors have negative lifetime earnings. That's not arguable. That's the sports books data reflecting that. 99.5 people that have not ever placed a bet, 99.5% of people that have ever placed a bet are down money, have negative lifetime earnings. That's fact. It's a very hard thing what we're doing if you're doing it for profit. That's why a lot of people should just do it for entertainment so they don't hurt themselves. But if you're doing it for profit and you treat it like a business, it'll pay like a business. It's just like anything else, but it takes time. It takes patience and it takes the understanding that you can work an entire month, an entire year and actually lose money. If you're not built for that, you're not built to trade and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that because that's the life of a winning trader, winning sports better. That you will have a sample size, even one as big of a year where you will lose money. If you bet 10 years, even if you're a 60% guy, that means you should win six of those years. You'll lose four of those years. That means four out of 10 years, you will work all year and lose money. If we're not prepared for that, we'll never be able to profit off those six plus years where we're plus. That's the difference. Personally, I'm having a losing 2024. Now, again, I have two months. We'll see how, when the dust settles, where we stand. If I end up losing, I'll be proud that I've won eight of the last 10 years. But knowing I'm coming off a losing year and there's no reason to hide that. In fact, you need to highlight that so you can show new bettors that even with winning information, even with beating the point spread, that there will be the randomness that you can't control. There will be bad calls. There will be bad runs. But as long as your process has proven to produce profit over a statistically significant sample size, then there's nothing the books can do as long as you manage your risk correctly. 
you become a mathematical certainty to turn a profit. And that's a powerful position to be in. But again, you control that with your risk of ruin and your ability to be plus EV. And to do that, it's simple. We don't bet bad numbers. We don't force bets. We don't overbet our edge. And we only bet what we can confirm as plus EV information. Or just Wong. You know what the Wongs have done? Remember, I've explained in the steam room multiple times how we Wong. I have adjusted the Wong teaser about three seasons ago, and it's been nothing but printing money since. In fact, three straight weeks, we've had zero teaser losses in the steam room. Let me just pull that number real fast for you, and uh, then we'll shut this down. Sorry, I'm just really proud of this because it took years to figure out how to use it best because the books are going to be going to continue to correct themselves. That's what a, a market does, an efficient market. So the long teaser eventually was going to be weeded out as profitable, but you also adjust with the market. You become more efficient too. So I found ways to do that with the teaser that have just been printing money the last three seasons. Finally, we're having a losing year. The least I could do, I said, is give the recipe out. Give it out exactly how you do it and let them profit from it. And here's what we did. We don't give out teasers in week one. I've explained why. We start in week two. So in week two, we went three and two. Week three, we went four and two. Week four, we went five and two. Now week five, five and oh. Week six, four and oh. Week seven, three and oh. Week eight, three and oh. So over the last four weeks, we've gone 15 and oh. 15 and 0 on our Wong teasers. Perfect over the last three weeks. Since the season started, weeks two through eight, we're sitting at 26, 27 and six, up 21 positions. Add in some juice, 20 positions, over 20 big bets without a single handicap, not a handicap in the teams, not even caring what the teams are. Nothing at all. We just stick to simple parameter. They have, well, if, if they fit, the qualifications, the trade signal will trigger. Once it triggers, we place a bet. If it doesn't trigger, we don't place a bet. It's a beautiful thing because there's no emotion involved. Here are the rules. When it justifies placing a bet, it'll trigger. It's a beautiful thing. Try to create trading signals for you. Get the emotion out of the way. Get the emotion out of the way. So. Make sure you guys go down there, smash that like button. Give me some comments. Give me some love. Head on over to my Instagram at Greek underscore gambler as well. I do videos there. I gave out free pick video last week in the UFC. And then I even went into the replies and, and added the three best bets. I put these three equals free money. They were my three biggest bets. They went three and zero. Oh. So head on over to there. Make sure you give it a follow. Give some support. I'll check them more at the comments and all that. See if we got decent views. Try to kick out another one of these towards the end of the week. And, uh, you know, do it out throughout the year. You guys have a great day. Enjoy the games. God bless you and your families. Have a safe and happy Halloween. And uh, keep your kids safe. Love you guys.